Welcome to the second video of how to draw Bob. If you haven't watched the first video of how to sketch Bob, you can go to the link below and watch it first. This video we are going to color it. First, go to layer property to lower the layer opacity of our drafts. In this video, I'm going to use watercolor to color Bob. So go to live brushes and choose watercolor basic watercolor choose a yellow color to do the foundation of Bob's skin I'm going to set 100% flow and 0% water flow and then I'm going to color all the yellow parts after we have done the base color we are going to do the shades Assume that the light is hitting from this side. This is the highest point of Bob's head. So over here, the further away from the light source, the darker Bob's head will be. So I'll be shading most on this side. And closest to the light source, this area should be the brightest. And under the goggles, it should also be really dark because the goggle is blocking most of the light. On this side of the body, since it is so far away from the light source, so it will also be darker than the other body parts. The arm will be even darker because it is behind the body, so very little light can hit it. So we're gonna shade most on his left arm. So now I'm going to shade the area, and I'm going to select the magic wand and select the area where we're going to shade so that we can only draw inside this area. I'm going to select an orange color to color in the area where I think will be darker. And then I'm going to choose an even darker orange color to shade the area that I think will be really dark. And then I'll choose the base color of Bob's skin to soften the edges so that it looks like the color is fading away. So this area over here, even though I said that it should be brighter, I'm still going to use an orange to quickly swipe it once and use the base yellow to color it again so that the colors will be more blend and it will look more natural. Then I'm going to choose a really light yellow color almost white color to do the highlights on this area where I said it would be the brightest and then I'll keep blending the colors now I'm going to shade under the goggles this area should be really really dark because the goggles blocked most of the lights so basically what I do is I'm going to choose the darkest color to color the area where I think will be really dark and then I have to use a lighter color to soften the edges. Usually I use the base color for blending but in some situation the two colors have too big of a contrast so I'm going to find a middle ground so I'm going to select a color that is in between the orange that I have selected and the base yellow color and I'll use this color to blend the orange and the yellow and soften the edges to make it look more natural so our goal is to make the colors blend well the edges of where the colors meet up are not supposed to be seen so I'll keep on shading all the other yellow areas here under the stripe, I'm going to use a really dark orange to draw a line. This side of Bob's body in general is brighter than the other side. So bear in mind when you shade this side, it shouldn't be darker than the other side. We can even use white to make this area look brighter. Don't forget the shades under the stripes. For the arm, the lower part should be darker. This is because it is further away from the light. 
while for the upper part it's going to be really bright because it is directly under the light so i'll keep on using orange color to color the area where i think will be the darker and white to color area where i think will be brighter and i'll use the middle ground color to soften the edges on this side of the arm it's generally darker than the other side so we're going to shade it more however the upper part is still brighter than the lower part even though this arm is in general darker there's still a difference on how much light is hitting on the different parts of the arm itself now that we have finished coloring the skin i'm moving on to color the goggles i'm going to choose a light gray color to color in the goggles this will be the base color of the goggles and then we'll do the shades and reflection later don't forget to open a new layer every time when you're drawing something new this is because it will be a lot easier to edit separate layer for example if i want to change the color of the goggles i can just delete this layer and redraw the goggles i won't mess up the skin layer where i have already spent a lot of time on it if I draw the goggles and the skin on the same layer, when I erase the goggles, I might mess up the skin and I have to redraw the whole thing and I'll be wasting a lot of time. So always remember to open a new layer for every object in your drawing. Now I've finished the frame of the goggles, I'm going to open a new layer to color this side thingy on the goggles. I'll open a separate layer because I think the shading will be different. So these areas will be the brightest. And also over here, because you can see the lights will be on this direction. And on the top of the goggles, it's also the area where the light will be hitting directly. And under them, you might think that it will be really dark, but actually it's really bright because there's where the reflection of light will be. Again, I'll use the magic wand to select the goggles. And this time I'm going to choose a dark color to shade the area where I think will be darker. And then I'll select a really light gray that is almost white color to do the reflection on the area where I think will be the brightest. So remember the area that I circled? We are going to draw on those areas. Now I'll hide the sketch layer to see how it looks without a sketch. So it looks good. So after using the really bright and really dark grays to color the area, you can see the strokes really clearly. That's why we need to blend the colors, so we won't see the strokes anymore. I'm going to use different shades of gray to do the uh, shading and try to make it look really smooth. So basically, use the light gray and white to color the area where it should be bright. And use dark grays and black to draw on the area where it should be darker. And use middle ground colors to soften the edges. Now I'll do the side thingy on the goggles. So this area where it is attached to the frame should be the darkest. So I'm going to use a really, really dark gray to do the shading. And then on the side, it should also be dark because it is a round surface. And on the front side, it should be the brightest. So I'm going to use white to do the highlight. And then use black to draw the line. And then it's actually quite similar on the other side.
and then we are going to do the shades inside the goggles. First, I'm going to use the dark gray to do the base of the shades. And then I'm going to choose a lighter gray so I can blend the whites on the eyeballs and uh, dark gray on the shades. Try to use different shades of color to blend different colors together so the edge will look smooth instead of really blunt. And then I'm going to choose a really dark gray to the shading on this area. Because most light is blocked by the goggles, so very very little light can enter this area. So I can even choose black to do the shade because there's almost no light, so it will be really really dark. I'll skip the part where I do the same thing on the other side of the eye. And then I'll do the side bend. First, I'll use black to do the basic color. And then I'll select a gray to do the reflection. And then I'll also use white to do the highlight. So now you can see there will be a big contrast. Now I'm going to do the white part of the eye. So I'm going to fill in the background with a color so it will be easier for me to fill in the white. And then I'll shade the eye. So I'm going to use a very light gray to shade the edge of the eye. And then use white to color in the center. So you can see a subtle shade of gray around the eye. And then we're going to draw the iris. If you have watched my first video on how to draw Bob, you know how to draw the iris. So now we're just tracing the line that we drew on our draft. So one technique that you can learn is to use a very small size eraser and erase some of the lines to make your eye look brighter and give it a glassy look. The lower part should be brighter so we're going to erase more lines. Use white to draw the reflection so now your eye really pops out. Now use orange to color the iris. I think I'm going to add a little more dark lines around the eye. And then we can use the eraser to erase some lines again. So on the lower side, it is the brightest, so I'm going to choose yellow and make it a little brighter. If you want to practice more, you can go on to draw the other iris. But if you're lazy like me, I'll just select this iris, duplicate it and paste it on the other eye. I don't know if you have ever noticed that, but Bob actually has two eyes with different colors. 
So the other eye is actually brown. Again, on the lower part, it's brighter, so I'm going to use orange to color it to make it a brighter look. And then the most important part in drawing eye is to give it a reflection. Now you may realize that there are so many layers. So you can hold this circle button over here and select multiple layers. And then press the file buttons on the sidebar and all the layers that you have selected have been grouped together. Now try to group all the goggles layers as well. Now I can hide the whole group as a whole. Let's go ahead and color the teeth. So I'll use white as the base color of the teeth. And then I'll use a light gray to do the shadings between each tooth and also the area where it is blocked by the upper lip. Now I'll use pink to color the tongue. Use dark red to shade the tongue. Choose a really dark red to color the back of the mouth. And I'll shade even more on the back of the tongue. Now I'll start drawing the gloves. I'll use black to be the base color of the gloves. First, I'll use white to draw on all areas where I think will be the brightest. And then I'll use grey to draw on areas where I think will also be bright but not as bright as the white areas. And then I'll use different shades of grey and black to soften the edges and blend the colors to give it a more natural look. And then we'll draw the other hand as well using the same technique. And then we can start drawing the overalls. I'll start with the hanging stripes. I'll use blue to color the hanging stripes and this will be the base color of his overalls. And then we'll shade the hanging stripes. Again, first I'll use a darker shade of blue to color areas where I think will be darker. And then I'll use a lighter shade of blue or even white to do the reflection of light. After that, I'll use the base color to blend the colors. This side of the hanger stripe should be overall darker than the other side, so in general, I'm going to shade it more, especially at the back of the stripe.
and then open a new layer to do the main part of the overalls. On the area where the hanging stripe is attached to the overalls, it should be the darkest because most light is blocked. Now we are going to shade his overalls. The lowest bottom part should be the darkest because most light is blocked, especially on the right hand side. So we'll shade most on these areas. I'll start with the darkest blue again and then I'll use different shades of blue to merge the edges and blend the color so it will have a more natural look. Try to hide your drawing strokes. When you first start drawing, you might see a lot of drawing strokes. So we're trying to blend the color to make the strokes less obvious. At the very bottom part of the overalls, there's a rebound of light from the floor back to the overalls, so it will be a little brighter. Now we can also do the shading on the upper parts of the overalls. In general, it should be brighter than the lower part, so no matter how you shade it, it shouldn't be darker than the bottom part. Now we can start drawing the front pocket. The techniques are the same. Use the base color to color it and then we can use different shades of blue to do the shading and the reflection of light. The area around the pocket should be darker, so I'm going to select an even darker blue to shade around the pocket. Now we'll go on to draw and shade the side pockets. And then I'll also shade this area because I think this area will be darker. The pocket is blocking some of the lights. Now you might find the overalls a little flat, so I'm going to draw some wrinkles. I'm going to use a dark blue to draw some lines everywhere. Just all over the overalls where you think it would be wrinkly. And then I'll use light blue to draw on all the lines that I drew earlier. And then I'll go on to add more lines. You don't have to draw some very neat line. Just try to draw some strokes everywhere all over the overalls. Now I'm going to use the base color blue to cover up all the strokes that we drew earlier. This can give texture to the overalls without making it too messy. Then I'm going to draw some obvious wrinkles. So I'll use the light blue to draw some lines on the overall. This time the lines have to be neat and tidy. Now I'll use a dark blue to draw under each bright line. So it's like the wrinkles are popping out. 
and then I'll go on and add more and more wrinkles. You can play around with the drawing by adding more wrinkles randomly. The principle is that the bright line should be on top and the dark line should be under the bright line. And then we are going to use our base color blue to cover up our strokes. So the strokes will be less obvious and the drawing will look more realistic and natural. Keep adding wrinkles and playing around with the texture until you are satisfied with your drawing. And then we can use the same technique to add more wrinkles on other parts of the overall such as the front pockets, the side pockets and the hanging stripes. Now I'm satisfied with the texture of my overalls, so I'll start drawing the legs. Same as the other parts of the overalls, I'm going to use the base color blue to do the foundation of the legs. And then I'll use the darker blue to shade areas where I think will be darker, use the lighter blue to draw on areas where I think there will be a reflection of light, and use the base color to blend the colors and make the edges less obvious. The legs will be the darkest parts of the overalls in general. It's under the bottom, so most light is blocked by Bob's body. However, very few lights will still reach the leg, so we still have to draw a little reflection of light. And then we'll use the same technique to draw the wrinkles. We're almost there. Let's go on and draw the shoes. Use black as the base color of the shoes.
similar as the gloves. First, I'll use white to draw the reflection of light. And then I'll use some darker shades of grey and black to blend the colours. I want to add some darker shades in Bob's mouth, so I'll use a darker shade of grey to add some shades just right under the upper lip. Now it looks more realistic. And when I look at the picture again, I realize the corners of Bob's mouth is less sharp, so I'm going to make the edges rounder. almost forgot his buttons. Let's use some black color to draw two circles as the buttons and use white to do the reflection of light. For the final touch, I'm going to use black to draw the shades right under the overalls on Bob's body. Also right under the goggles. Well done guys, we have finally finished drawing Bob. Please comment below to let me know if this video is helpful and also tell me what you want me to draw next. If you like this video, remember to like and subscribe. You can also check out my artwork on Instagram and Facebook. The links are on the description. Thanks for watching.